Welcome back to the channel guys, as YouTubers are want to say. After a really good start, things went a bit wrong with this vlog from a technical perspective, as you will see. And I do apologise, but I get a little bit grumpy. So I missed a few bits out as a result of my bad temper. And I'm filming some inserts in the car to cover those off. Welcome to Broccolicia! Yep. Uh. So, Roman Gazetteers, this is one of the 16 forts that are located along the course of Hadrian's Wall. It's a later fort and it was actually built on top of the Vallum. The first insert is just to point out that I had forgot to mention two vlogs ago that uh, we were doing a little trilogy of Hadrian's Wall related vlogs. So this is the third one of those. I don't suppose it really matters with the YouTube attention spans. I'm stood on the ramparts up here and you can see the Vallum. Interesting that the fort was built on top of it, suggesting that it was no longer required. The Vallum is one of those interesting features of Hadrian's Wall uh, because the experts don't really know what its purpose was. It's a long linear embankment that runs on the what we would now consider to be the English side of Hadrian's Wall. It's not a road because the military way is further up, closer to the wall. So we just don't know really what its purpose was. But uh, myself and other, if you like, rebel experts do have some ideas about it. The experts struggle with the Vallum because of its position. It's not on the north of Hadrian's Wall, where they would expect it to be. But that is all predicated on the notion that Hadrian's Wall was about defending the rest of Britain from the Caledonians to the north. But maybe, and here's the rub, Hadrian's Wall may have been about keeping the conquered people of Britain in, as opposed to the Caledonians out. Think about it. It's quite an interesting fort. There's a little bit of stonework left here in this gateway, but really it's just ramparts. And it's not the reason that the Roman Gazette is here today. There's something very interesting outside the fort that we are here to take a look at. But before we take a look to it, a quick shout out to Tweedy Outdoors, who gave us a fantastic review. He distilled in the most elegant way the very essence of WC21 UK Productions Limited. Thanks for that. And as a result, we have picked up some new subscribers from that great channel. So welcome, guys, and I hope you enjoy the content. Anyhow, let's get on with this. Oh, you're over there now. How did you do that? And now you're there. Welcome to a temple of Mithras at Broccolicia. Some people came, so I had to stop. I think we're all right now. So we enter the temple and these concrete posts, very Ministry of Works style, represent the wooden screens that were once here. And this was all part of the initiation ceremony. It was a little bit like sort of baptism, but uh, even more crazy than that. All to do with Mithras and the god of the sun, Sol. The initiation entailed bringing the initiation, if that's the right word, probably not, up to this altar. And then it all kicked off here at the altar. Now it's a good job this umbrella has appeared because it started raining. Behind the altar is this shelf and on that stood a relief of Mithras fighting, slaying the bull. And in the uh, Mithraic belief system, it was the blood of the slaughtered bull that led to the creation of humanity. I had meant to just elaborate a little bit about the Persian origin uh, in, in which Mithras was just an associate of the spirit of good, Ahura Mazda, uh, and together they fought against the spirit of evil, uh, Aramin. 
Uh, by the time the Romans got hold of this cult, they simplified it and it all became about Mithras. At the end of the ceremony, the newly initiated would have a crown placed upon their head at a jaunty angle. They would then remove the crown and say, Mithras is my crown. This place is very much uh, as the Ministry of Works uh, left it. Um, I'm a great fan of the Ministry of Works because I'm stuck in the past, basically. Uh, all of this stuff, the altar, the posts, and these, whatever these are down here, uh, are all concrete, very Ministry of Works, concrete replicas of what they found here. The original stuff is all in Newcastle Museum. In use from 200 to around 350, uh, the temple was finally desecrated when the Romans switched from the cult of Mithras to the cult of Jesus. This Mithraeum is not the only one to be discovered in the UK. Uh, there was one in London, but it was in the way of a commercial corporate development and couldn't be saved in situ, apparently. Uh, it was reconstructed, but rather badly by all accounts. And guess what, guys? Guess who was not allowed to partake in the Mithraic religion? Yes, of course, it was women. They weren't allowed to take part in it, obviously. And so we have a religion that was peopled by men, no women. Uh, apparently it was largely uh, army soldiers and people from the world of Roman commerce that took part in the Mithraic uh, religion. So no women and strange initiation ceremonies to get in as well. Does that sound a bit familiar to you? I'll put up some sort of overlay. This is a warning, things are now going to get grumpy and ill-tempered. A disaster has just happened off camera. I ran to get something from my bag. The tripod blew over, smashing my DJI mic transmitter or receiver. I never remember which and it doesn't matter now because it's all smashed to pieces. So this is now a very expensive addition, very expensive indeed addition of the Roman Gazette. I've rigged up to a road video mic thing. I don't suppose it sounds half as good. Uh, so in light of that, uh, please like and subscribe. I really need the monetization now and I'm in a bad mood. So that's the end. <laughs>